Hey guys, today I want to analyze a game played by Chessy Bus, who is Jesse from Chess Goals. This is a 3 plus 2 game on chess.com. So white plays e4, Jesse plays c6, d4, d5. This is Karo Khan. And now we see the classical variation when white defends the pawn on e4. So Jesse captures, his opponent captures, and now Jesse plays knight f6. This is called the Tartakower variation. And this is what we recommend in the chess goals Carol concourse. Knight takes f, e takes f, bishop c4, this is pretty standard. Jesse plays bishop d6. The plan is to quickly castle. This bishop also points to the white king. Queen e2. Now here you can block with the queen, offering the queen trade, but it goes into a pretty dry endgame. Not a lot of chances to play from the win. So in our repertoire, we recommend usually blocking with the bishop so that you can uh, get castled and keep the queens on the board. Because this queen on e2 oftentimes is not on the best square if her rook comes to e8, pointing at the queen. So after knight f3, Jesse castles. h3, good guy 355, prevents the bishop from coming to g4, but as we'll see later, he's a good guy by pushing this pawn up to h3. Jesse loves seeing that pawn on h3 in the Tartakower. I think this is the third game where Jesse has used this idea to get crushing attacks. This is just the most recent, and that's why I'm choosing this one to highlight. Rook e8. All right, lining up the king and queen. There's already a threat of bishop b4 check, causing some problems. Bishop e3. Knight d7. This is another thing we recommend in the course. Keep this c8 bishop back temporarily. And we're going to go knight d7 and knight f8. And the knight will sit really nicely on f8. And then we can develop the light square bishop. So white castles, knight f8, c3, strengthening the center so that this bishop is free to move, bishop to e6. So Jesse's offering a trade here of the light square bishops, knowing that the dark square bishop will come to, e to d6 later. This knight can still come out through g6 or even e6. Um, it's a pretty equal game, but Jesse has like extra kingside play with the f pawn, with the uh, doubled f pawns. So a lot of times you can use this double pawn to help attack. And here his opponent plays bishop to d3, which we'll see in a few moves. He's going to regret this decision. Jesse plays queen d7. And now if you look at the queen and bishop, they're eyeing this pawn on h3. But we don't want to take that pawn right away because it is a sacrifice of a bishop for two pawns. So we got to make sure there's a big enough attack. Queen c2 by white, eyeing this pawn on h7, but we'll see as we see this knight on f8 does a really nice job defending the pawn. So nothing to worry about here. Bishop d6, pointing at the h2 square. Now the sacrifice becomes really dangerous for white. And I don't know if good guy 355 saw this coming. He plays rook f to e1, and Jesse hits him with the tactic. Bishop takes h3. And at this point, so the last move, white spent 50 seconds to play rook e1. At this point, white just spends 2.7 seconds to take back. Jesse immediately snaps the pawn in half a second. And now look at the clock. 28 seconds for white. Trying to figure out what to do here. Jesse still has 238 left on the clock. He studied this Carol Khan course. He's put it into chessable. He's been training the lines. He's very comfortable with these Tartikar positions, and he's barely used any time on the clock. And he knows the sacrifice is going to work. Because he's got the queen hitting the knight. He has the bishop pointing at h2. He has the rook ready to help out, and he has the knight ready to come help out. So four attackers and white's not in a great position to defend here. So white plays bishop e2, defending this knight. And Jesse goes knight to g6. Very strong idea. The knight's coming to h4, attacking the f3 knight, but white cannot afford to have that knight traded off because then there's this combo. Bishop h2 check, king moves. Bishop g3 check, king moves, queen h2 check, king moves, queen h1 mate. So there's mating ideas here already after knight h4. So here white plays queen to d3. Um, another thing that white has to watch out for is sometimes there's like a rook takes e3 sacrifice as well. So there's a lot of tactics in the air. 
queen d3, helping to defend on the third rank. Jesse plays knight to h4, threatening the immediate mate. And as we saw, knight takes h4, leads to this checkmate. I'll show it on the board. King here, check, and checkmate. So after knight h4, um, white plays bishop to f1. But now we see, instead of going for this checkmate, the knight on f3 is completely undefended, and knight takes f3 is checkmate. All right, let's look at the analysis and see what the computer thinks of this. Actually, we'll do the game report. 71.6 accuracy for white, 98.6 for Jesse, for black here. And we'll flip the board. That's a really strong accuracy score. So Jesse was very comfortable in the book. He knew about the sacrifice. And this was the blunder, bishop e2. So with best play right here, Stockfish is saying it's equal. That's how strong the sacrifice is. And the only move, the only move that draws the game, every other move should be losing, is queen to d1. That's a really hard move to find, especially when you have 30 seconds on the clock. If white finds queen to d1, the game is still not over yet. There's still a lot to play for here. Uh, black has the option of doing a perpetual check, but you could also play a move like g5 and keep the game alive with this idea of g4 and then doing the mate sequence on h2. So now if white plays bishop to f1, we can drop the queen back. And now let's give white a random move, a3, just to show how strong this attack can be. Now g4, the knight's already attacked, and this knight cannot move because it's going to be checkmate in one. So white actually has to give up the knight already. Now I don't expect white to play a3, but it just shows that this is a very tough position for white to play already, and he may have to give back the piece very shortly just to avoid this attack. All right, guys, so if you're interested in this Karo Khan course, um, we've already seen a lot of really nice Karo Khan victories coming straight from the course. I'll put a link in the description below, and I'll also link to a video that kind of just gives an overview of the course. It's nine chapters. We have a full video of chapter one, so you can get a really good taste of the style of the course. And then for the other eight chapters, we have uh, chapter previews that are one line each. So you can watch the whole first chapter, you can watch a line of every other chapter, see what you think, uh, read our reviews on the website, and we hope you like this video. This is just another Caro Khan win. We got memes in our Discord about how strong the Caro is. Seems pretty overpowered. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and please subscribe to our channel for more content. Thanks for watching, everyone.